this is one of the happiest moments of my life. And the world would probably be a better place if we had a few more moments like this. Everybody wants to live a happy life. Almost everything we do is in pursuit of a happy life. Transactions. <laughs> 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 like a to use the credit card. But if this moment was one of the happiest moments of my life, then does that mean there are different levels to happiness? And at what point does life become unhappy? And if there are different levels to happiness, what does a happy life really mean? How are we looking? Wallet, Kindle, charger, we good. Yeah. This is Sophia and Peter. Sophia, I can talk to her about anything. Yeah, and Pete, yeah. well, he's just a good time. <laughs> a couple months ago, I agreed to go on this trip with them to Africa to climb the tallest freestanding mountain in the world, Mount Kilimanjaro. As you probably know, I'm still kind of figuring out my life. So I usually say yes to everything. But this trip almost cost $5,000 in total, and it basically forced me to leave Ecuador, where life was already pretty good. All to rough it out for eight days, just to see a pretty view for like five minutes. I did say that view was one of the happiest moments of my life, but how much is five minutes of extreme happiness really worth? Tons of live stream gets out. <laughs> I got the live strain of the yellow fever vaccine. They're gonna be like, Mr. Hood, come with me. <laughs> like, you know you're supposed to get it five days before you enter it. How fake it is. We're all tired, Chris. I'm not tired. <laughs> I'm exhausted. I'm gonna take a shower. Gassed. <laughs> When we told our friends and families we were going on this trip, they were all like, okay, but why? Yeah, I get it. What's the point of spending so much money, time, and energy to walk up a super tall mountain and then walk right back down? But I was still super excited, even though I guess I didn't really know why. You know that awkward feeling when you're meeting new people for the first time and you gotta kinda act normal for a little bit before you get comfortable enough to really be goofy. Weirdly enough, having a camera speeds that process up real fast. Yeah, <laughs> Country. Uh, <laughs> date of birth. <laughs> All right. Your favorite client and your you, client you hate, you know, of the 12 of us. Maybe you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you. Argan. Maybe you. Argan. Thumbs up, thumbs up. I get along with most people, but here's to me hoping that nobody finds me and my camera too annoying for the next eight days. I've always liked hiking, but I've never really known why. Sometimes I think to myself, this is super unproductive. And sometimes I think, this is super boring. I'm literally just walking. I try to start some fun conversations, but sometimes I feel like they'd be better if I wasn't fighting for air while trying to talk. Update, Sophia made it, oh my god. We're, I did it! <laughs> we were worried about her. You guys look gassed though, it's kind of funny. <laughs> Oh, you carried it? Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> this is Sophia, and this is my crew. <laughs> I would introduce everyone, but let's be honest. If you're important, you'll come up. This is Liv. Liv's important. You'll soon find out why. Oh my god. Crazy day. <laughs> you have your retainer in? Yeah. Okay, Peter was uh, pooping like seven times in the night. Morning. 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 Morning.
toilet paper in your duffel? That's kind of full. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> I'm in a fine room. <laughs> I also brought my own toilet paper, then have this toilet paper, and then have your toilet paper. <laughs> it honestly, I could barely hear you, and I was like, I'm not going to yep. yell and be like, oh, Were you saying my name? What do you want? Day two. <laughs> Day two. <laughs> Day two. Jour numéro deux! Oh, yeah! <laughs> Guys, boys, boys, boys. <laughs> boys step up. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> That's the cool thing about having a camera and taking videos. I probably would have never remembered he's happy, but less memorable moments otherwise. Which is kind of weird to think about, right? Like, how much of our lives do we actually remember? Of the 42,000 minutes that we're living and breathing, assuming an 80 year lifespan, how many minutes can you vividly recall? Like, on this eight day trip, I can probably remember three to four moments really vividly. All of which have yet to happen. Like this moment, I remember what happened, but even with a video, I don't remember how I was feeling, what I was thinking, what we talked about, how heavy my legs were, what the air smelled like, all the important details that made up this moment, gone. Is that for me? Yeah. Oh, David. Are we eating? Do one of looking and the one of eating. Is supposed to be candid? Yeah, like one, two, three. I think it's a video. Alright, now eat, now eat, now eat, now eat. I feel like the guides do this dance in the beginning for a reason. When everybody's still happy and things are still novel, before things start to get tough. I also just want to say that I heard from someone, I'm not going to say who, that Curtis doesn't like Mr. Manchester. What? I heard that too. Crazy. <laughs> I have a name. See? It's Curtis. <laughs> Remember when I said hiking is unproductive and unmemorable? Well, I'm realizing it depends. Because there's literally nothing else to do and nowhere else to go, I always think to myself, well, I might as well talk to the person walking in front of me. It's like a good in between like venture and private equity, like the risk spectrum. That's how I like to describe it. No, it's like not a startup risk, but it's also not private equity risk. It's right in between. Because <laughs> there's cash flow, you know, so. Again, I probably only remember like a handful of these conversations. So maybe hiking is unmemorable based on the way I defined it earlier. But you really get to know someone after chatting with them on, for boy. eight days. Wow. And that yeah. relationship you built from those conversations is memorable. My picture. Dude, booger, 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 ew. Where? Yes, please. I like this camp. Oh, thanks for getting me to so <laughs> What are you doing, Viv? Just having an itch. <laughs> 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 I'm so smooth with the pee bottle. <laughs> I did last night like set up my tent so that I could use the pee bottle. Mm. Nice. But I didn't need to. I do it inside my sleeping bag, so. You do? It's gonna get in my. Yeah. Hey y'all, this is uh, what is it, day four? Morning of day four? Pete? Yeah. Oh. Oh. As you can tell, things are not looking good. Hiking's actually pretty easy, but it's really just the, uh, the lodging situation. <laughs> That's tough. You have to sleep in these tents.
Last night was probably the worst night I've ever slept in my entire life. I'm <laughs> <laughs> making it worse. Dude, can you not film while I'm changing? <laughs> I don't know. Look at it later. My eyes are wake up. Not, like, you don't look like you only slept four hours and ate some worms. <laughs> Bernard slept four hours tonight. No one mentioned worms, please. Okay, how we sleep tonight? I was alright, actually. It was alright? Yeah, up and down, but that's fine. Not as bad as Pete? Yeah. Dude, we already did the debrief in the town. <laughs> we literally filmed and then the mic and didn't work and then we had to film again. <laughs> I did hate you guys do that twice. Yeah. yeah no, no. Pete, over under, this is the worst night of the trip. I think there's a potential to get worse. But I don't think it's the worst. Yeah. Think it gets worse from here? Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to say this, Excluding but... Excluding Summit Day? I have a feeling it might go downhill from here. What? <laughs> Last night was pretty miserable, not just for me, but for everybody. And the weird thing is, is that I remember all the details of last night pretty vividly. I remember how much my muscles tensed up the whole night from the cold, even though I was wearing like seven layers, including my winter coat and sleeping bag. I remember lying awake for seven terrible hours, not being able to sleep, seriously doubting if I could do three more nights of this. Is it just a coincidence that my unhappy moments are way more memorable than my happy ones? I was honestly feeling pretty gross and groggy like all day. But this afternoon, seeing all these cool trees and waterfalls and getting to know my man, Mr. Manchester, got me in a perky mood again. It all comes to full circle. Full circle. Yeah. pods are struggling, man. <laughs> Alright, Sophia. Who have you loved getting to know the most in this trip so far? How am I supposed to do that with everyone in the room? <laughs> so you do have a we get to the top of the mountain, we're standing on the caldera. I knew you were gonna ask this. And you, get, you have to throw one person into it from the group. That was gonna be my question. Who is it? Do -do, do -do, do -do. <laughs> Why not? Uh, it's yeah, it's a cop out. It's a cop out. <laughs> All right, I throw David so he doesn't have to walk down the mountain. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> Bust the knee! <laughs> There's no question that high altitudes are associated with increased flatulence. <laughs> <laughs> this afternoon tea time was my favorite of the whole trip, and I remember it pretty vividly unlike the dozens of other times we hung out in this tent that I don't really remember. It's also weird to think about how this morning we all felt horrible. Like we just hit rock bottom, and then just a few hours later that afternoon, we had one of the most memorable moments of the trip. Is it really just another coincidence? <laughs> How'd you sleep? Slept good. Yeah? Did you sleep better? Yeah, really good. Yeah, August! No. No. Up to 2.5 too, and I'm like, mm. Peace in. I just kind of pee. Sorry, sorry about my behavior this morning. <laughs> it was, it was, it was not feeling yeah. good. Last thing I needed was Eddie uh, shoving a camera on my face <laughs> at 6 a.m. when I had a pounding headache. Ew. Gross. <laughs> yeah, when they're just so, be so focused. I know. <laughs> 
We saw way too many guides and porters fall from the wall today. Thankfully, everyone in our group stayed safe, but sometimes I do wonder if this is all worth the risk. Have we really gotten so bored with our lives that we need to start climbing mountains for fun? And I don't know if you've noticed, we're like having fun, but also not having fun at the same time. Because not having fun is how you have fun in this crew. <laughs> what are we grateful for in life, brother? Uh, no, there's only three days left. Three days? <laughs> <laughs> brother! Yeah. Brother! Oh, Katie. Brother! <laughs> Hey yo, day six. I'm coming, hold on. Friend. <laughs> Look, I'm smiling. Candid. And then walk out. <laughs> so candid. <laughs> I know it's only technically day six, but it feels like we're almost done because today we're gonna hike all the way to the base camp and then eat dinner and only sleep like two hours. Wake up at midnight and then hike seven hours all the way to the top to catch sunrise. We're all probably a little nervous about tonight given no sleep and the high altitude and probably just a little antsy to get it over with. Okay, describe some of day in one word. <laughs> there used to be a, a lot of uh, anxiety happening anxiety. Amongst, amongst the group, uh, yeah. Intense. Intense. <laughs> Dre, one word. Explosive. It's <laughs> two, it's two. Cold. Cold. Um, Got a little tip, so we're trying yeah. to pave yeah. that over. Yeah, yeah. yeah sorry for shopping. Work, work on that. Now this part of the story is a little bit harder to tell. Partially because we hiked in the middle of the night, so it was completely dark the whole time. And also because people were pretty stressed, so nobody really wanted to show out for the camera. And it's kind of hard to come up with a metaphor to explain and describe what hiking for seven hours in the middle of the night at 5,000 meters really felt like. But the best way I describe it is that every step feels twice as heavy as it normally does. Every finger feels twice as cold, every breath twice as short, and every minute twice as long. And the worst part is, you have no idea how close you are. The night felt like forever. But once we saw the sunrise, we knew we were close. And now, seven days later, we're back to one of the happiest moments of my life. How did I summit Kilimanjaro? <laughs> With the help of Lottie. Yeah, <laughs> Lottie! Yeah. Zipping up my bag every single time because I love her today. We only stayed up here at the summit for maybe five minutes. But those five minutes were some of the happiest and most memorable minutes of my life. The view was amazing, but that's not the reason why it meant so much. It wouldn't have been nearly as happy nor memorable if I took a helicopter up here, for example. The reason it meant so much is because of everything we had to go through to get to this point. Eight days of uncomfortable, cold, freezing sleep, walking seven hours, barely being able to breathe, with people you didn't really know. But now the real question is, was that five minutes of extreme happiness worth the chase? Because life back home is usually pretty good. I sleep well, eat well, feel comfortable with my friends and routine. And I'm just generally pretty happy. But the problem is, I remember very few of those ordinary days. Ordinary happiness just isn't memorable. Only extreme happiness is. And the only way to chase extreme happiness is to find extreme unhappiness first. In other words, the lower your lows, the higher your highs. In the past, these extraordinary moments happened to us all the time. When every day you had to kill a deer to eat, or build a hut to sleep in, or run from a lion to survive. But today, life's gotten too easy. Survival has become trivial. And that means these extraordinary experiences won't just come to us on their own. You have to go and seek them out, which is why paying money to be uncomfortable climbing a super tall mountain and then coming right back down is worth every penny. 
Wiz King, give me the Day lies. seven, night vlog, baby. Vibes are high. It's <laughs> true, boy. Wiz King, live Riz right King. here. You spinning game all day. Hey, hey. Three peaks. Who is that? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I know. The Queen Maza. Queen Maza. <laughs> right, I'm going now. <laughs> you guys both for um, all the Mr. Surprises and Mr. Delicious and um, all you guys did for uh, us for all the meals. It was really great and really appreciate it. Um, and then especially the cooks. Where are you guys? Hey! Oh, there you are. <laughs> In the beginning, when I was reflecting on this trip and making this video, I thought the friendships that I formed were the most important and notable part of this whole experience. Now don't get me wrong, I really do value the relationships that I built. Obviously, everybody's amazing, especially Liv. But who knows when and if I'll see everyone again. But what I do know is that I'll always have forever the memories that I made with them. As corny as that sounds. Good and bad. Here's to living a memorable life, not just a happy one. The board was probably this, this how cool the group was, honestly. Because, you know, being at the other hotel and like meeting some of the other group, you know, <laughs> I was like, oh my god. <laughs> I'm gonna be first up this mountain because everyone else has got like no <laughs> knees. Because <laughs> of <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to talk to you or talk to the camera? No, I said, you're talking to me, you're talking to the camera. Oh, always. Yeah. I have to know everything I say might be filmed. For sure. For sure. <laughs>